It's the professional MasterChef semi-finals. Last week, the knockouts reduced 12 chefs down to the best eight. <laughs> Great cooking. Tonight, the pressure builds as the remaining chefs cook off against one another for the chance to work with some of the most inspirational culinary talents in the country. The numbers are going down and down. The days are getting harder. It's insane. There's no room for error at all now. You've got to just 110% cook your heart out. I dreamt about getting here, you know, really wanted to get here, and obviously now I'm here. It's really surreal. Yeah, 100% this is the biggest thing I've ever achieved as a chef. I can't wait to get started. Big tension in here today. It's the first semi-final. This is when I want to see the star start to step forward. Welcome to the MasterChef Professionals semi-finals. We've asked you to design a dish that is dedicated to somebody that has inspired you. This could be a mentor, a family member, somebody that really means something to you. At the end of the tasting, we will decide on the best two dishes. And the chefs that cook those two dishes will go straight through. That means there'll be six of you cooking again for the remaining four places. You've got one hour and 45 minutes to show us real passion. Off you go. We have some talent here today. We've got different personalities, quite a lot of different styles as well. We're going to see some exciting food. We know when it's this close, there can be no errors. It's got to be memorable. This is the key to success today. Sous chef Stephen works in corporate catering. He won his place in the semi-finals with a pigeon dish, wowing the judges with its complexity and intense flavors. This is a huge deal for me but your world could come crashing down within a split second, so I'm just going to take it step by step. Hopefully, we'll get there. How you doing, Stephen? Busy day today. Busy day. Busy but happy. You're still smiling. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you got to smile through, haven't you, really? Or else you're going to do cry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cry. Oh, no, there's no cry I'm going to be doing. Who's inspired you for your dish? Well, my, what inspired you? My dish is called Fish and Chips at Granny Audrey's. So, obviously, that's my nana, very important woman in my life. So, every Friday, I used to finish school. I used to go to my nana's house. And then we all used to sit down and have fish and chips. We're not going to see just fish and chips and a piece no. of a newspaper, are we? So, I have refined it. I'm using John Dory. I made a batter crumb, which I'm going to roll it in at the last minute. Pom souffle. Uh, and for the chips, I'm using pack de brick and then filling it with pom puree. We've got Stephen's mushy peas and Stephen's tartar sauce. It's a very stressful dish to cook. I'm sorry? It's a very stressful dish to cook. Why? There's a lot of stuff that can go wrong in this dish. I only did pom souffles for the first time last week. Never done it before in my life. I'm guessing this fish and chips might be a little bit posh for Granny Audrey. Yeah, I don't think she'll like it. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what, you know what. Uh... Ah, it sounds lovely, Stephen. Good luck to you. Cheers. Stephen's fish is John Dory. So we're getting posh fish and chips. Potato souffle. Whoa, what a difficult thing to do. Plus, he's only made them a few days ago, so he really is putting himself under a massive amount of pressure here. The way that Stephen is cooking it with the modern taste of different bits of potatoes, there's a pea oil that's going on. A fish and chips dish I've never seen before. But I can't wait to try. Birmingham-based sous chef Leo has six years' experience at Michelin star level and has impressed the judges with his solid classic cookery. 
in my mind, so I am thinking that I could get to the finals, but then it all depends on how I perform on the day. You've got to just kind of crack on and deal with it, really. So, what's the dish and who's inspired it? It's a classic Greek dish, combination of flavours. We finally get some Greek food. So we've done, um, it's a classic on lamb, green beans, feta, chickpeas. Like, uh, it's not traditionally as a stew, but uh, just changed it with the times. Right, OK, and who inspired the dish? My family, my mum, my dad, my grandparents. We used to sit around the dinner table and kind of dig into this. This is the kind of food we had. Is this dish good enough to be one of the top two dishes? Should be, fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Leo has decided to draw upon his Greek heritage for inspiration. Leo is using feta, is adding a chickpea puree and a yogurt gel. Flavours that all work very well with lab. The flavours are going to be there. It's how do you dissect it and make it refined. It's going to have to come with something special if it's going to get into the top two. Reading-based sous chef Gareth has shown great technical skill to earn his place in the semi-final. The ambition of his last rabbit dish won approval from the judges. Back in mind, you're always saying to yourself, you know, you can get this far, but the reality is a lot harder than uh, just believing. Gareth is doing a floating island. This is a reinvention with gooseberries. You want to get the essence of a classic floating island, which essentially is a beautiful vanilla custard with a poached meringue sitting on top with a caramel glaze and some almonds. Floating islands, I've made hundreds over the years. It's got to be the perfect meringue. Lovely and sweet, bit of texture in there, and cooked right through. So my dish today, it's um, inspired by my mum. Speaking to her a couple of months ago, and she said about gooseberries, how they used to be so popular and no one really uses them that much anymore. Oh, do you know, I'm with your mum, cos I don't think people use enough gooseberries. No. That's beautiful fruit. Yeah. What's mum's name? Belinda. Belinda? Belinda. Yeah. Belinda's Floating Islands. Thank you, Gareth. <laughs> Thank you. Chefs, you've had 20 minutes. Cumbrian-based private chef Matt has consistently produced memorable creative dishes, showcasing his passion for healthy ingredients. This is a good opportunity to sort of let your mind run free and just go a bit wild. If I get this right, if I pull it off, it'll be really impressive. What's the dish today, Matt? Basically doing a stuffed sea bream dish. I'm going to halfway cut down a sea bream, fill it with a morel and wild boar pancetta duck cell. I'm making a dashi with wild boar pancetta and moss. And yeah, the dish is inspired by my father and his love for the ocean and the Lake District waterfalls. Fond of a bit of running water, was he, your dad? Yeah, that's all we did, spend our time in, in the ocean, kite surfing, climbing waterfalls. I mean, that's the brief, isn't it? It's inspired by, my dad inspired me. He's the most influential man in my life. Um, unfortunately, he passed away last year. I just want to honour my dad. I just want to do it. I want to be happy with it. Make him happy, make my family proud. Matt, I think you'd be proud of you already, son. Thank you very much. Matt's dish is, is intriguing, but that's always Matt for me. He does things to food that, that makes you sort of sit up and pay attention. This time, it's moss-infused sea bream. Never had that before. Moss is the flavour of Earth. It's almost like a stale smell. When it's in situ, it smells divine. The question is, will it work with this dish? 22-year-old senior chef de partie, Louisa, has stood out with her work rate and intensely flavored sauces. She secured her semi-final place with a standout dessert. So my last round was probably one of the best rounds so far. It's just crazy to hear them kind of comments, and it just really boosts you to do better. I kept my dish quite classical today. I've got lamb, lamb cannon. I'm making a dough for my potato, fresh peas, and I'm also going to make a lamb sauce. OK, why classical today, then? 
I started off doing very classical dishes when I first became a chef. When I met my partner, I met him in the industry and my first job that I had with him. This dish is dedicated to him a little bit. When we went on our first date in Bournemouth, we had lamb. First ever potato dish that I ever learned how to cook as a chef is uh, dough from us potato, so I'm, that's why I'm cooking that. This is very personal. Yeah, I'm going to really enjoy doing it as well because some really nice things on the plate and some of my favourite things to eat as well as cook. Nice dish. Thank you, Louisa. Thank you. Thank you. I love the sounds of this. Lamb, with garlic, dauphinois potatoes. Dream made in heaven. Dauphinois potatoes is one of the first things we learn at catering school. Done well, sensational. You want the potatoes to be lightly cooked, the cream to be beautiful and reduced. And of course, you want the flavour of garlic and a little bit of nutmeg just running through it as well. Can't wait. Chefs, you have just 30 minutes left, please. 21-year-old sous chef Craig is the youngest semi-finalist. Right from the start, he's demonstrated focus and flavorful cooking. We're down to the final eight chefs now, so the competition has just stepped up another gear. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I've got a few tricks in the bag that I can sort of pull out and uh, see me through. Today, Craig is making flapjack. Craig's going to be dissecting it and breaking it down into all types of different areas. We've got a biscuit, we've got a cake, we've got a traditional flapjack. There's an oat caramel ice cream, and we've got a gel as well. I've no idea what it's going to look like, but I like the sound of it. Churning uh, my ice cream, a bit of dry ice, so it will freeze really, really quickly. <laughs> you have your fun, chef. Another day at the office. <laughs> Brilliant. There's going to be a bit of skill in this dish. I expect nothing less from Craig. He is one talented chef in this kitchen. Why is this so special to you? It's inspired by my mum. Uh, flapjack was like one of the first things I remember cooking. It must have been probably about when I was about five years old. My mum sat on top of the counter. My mum had a big green sort of saucepan all the butter and the syrup melting in there and all sort of a vivid memory almost. Is that one of your earliest memories? Probably, yeah. Okay. Lovely story, lovely oh, recipe. Love Thank you. Yeah, I've got a bit of a mission on today. I've got loads to do. Originally from Hull, 27-year-old sous chef Jamie has excelled with his daring flavour combinations from around the world. Marcus said to me after the showstopper that I've, I've raised the bar. I just need to make sure that my cooking stays consistent but interesting at the same time. What are you making, Jamie? A Spanish fried fish dish, so pescadito frito, using the, the special dusting flour that they use in Andalusia to coat fish. The fish I'm going to use is place, and that's going to be served with a courgette and basil puree, and then a little potato salad. It has jasmine running through the dish. If you ever go to Seville in the summer, it's like searingly hot heat, and then the streets are just perfumed with this really strong smell of jasmine flowers. Who's the dish inspired by, Jamie? Uh, so it's inspired by my girlfriend, Maria. How? So I've not really travelled very much to Spain, but since I met Maria, I've really been indulged in their culture, their way of life, everything about the country, really. I've just sort of absorbed it, and I've really taken to it. I really love it. Ready Place is something that we're very familiar with, especially in this country. It's a very simple thing to do. But it's also very easy to overcook a fish that's cooked this way. Jasmine, this is the intriguing part about this dish. The jasmine flowers, some of them can be poisonous and give you food poisoning, and there are others that are edible. Gloucestershire-based junior sous chef Tom has fought hard throughout the competition and earned his semi-final place with a well-executed veal and sweetbread dish. I think that you have to have a sense of self-belief. If you don't try and win, then you're not going to win. So you've got to believe that you can win. Who has inspired your dish today? So my dish is inspired by my granddad. He was a great man and always helped everyone and helped bring up my, me and my sister for a while. OK, so, so what's, what's the dish then, Tom? So my granddad's favourite food was fish, so I've decided to cook turbot because I think that's the best fish in the sea for me. 
And my granddad's used to grow lots of veg in the garden. I used to always go picking, picking leeks out and stuff. So I thought leeks would be a great thing to use. Well, you know, we absolutely loved your last plate of food, the veal. For me, the presentation is something they need to work on. Have, have you taken that on board for this? Yes, definitely. I know exactly how I'm ahead I want it to look, and I'm going to stick to that, and I think it's going to look quite smart. How important is it that you do Grandad proud with this? It's massive. I really want to do him proud. I mean, he's no longer with us, but for my grandma, he still is with us. It'll be great for her to see. All right, then. Get cracking, Tom. Good on Grandad. Fish like turbot is beautiful, especially cooked on the bone. It does have to be sure, though, when you remove the fillets off the bone to serve, that none of those bones are still stuck in it. This sounds like a very simple sounding dish, but I like the ideas of all the different types of leek. Leek puree, smoked leeks, and a leek fondant as well. Could look really interesting, as long as he gets that presentation perfect. Guys, last five minutes. Tom, you've got about 90 seconds. You've got yep. nothing on a plate. Stop! Time's up. Thank you. Nice one. Clean. Boy, yeah. that was a hard one, mate. I swear to God, that was hard. Inspired by his Spanish girlfriend, Maria, Jamie has cooked pescadito frito, place fried in Spanish flour, a courgette and basil puree, served with potato, crab, and jasmine pickled apple salad, place crackling, fried courgette flowers, and a dressing of basil oil, fresh apple juice, and gin. To present, He's using jasmine water over dry ice. <laughs> Steaming ball. I love the look of the dish, and I like this, this theatre. This sort of meadow with a bull in it and the jasmine smell coming through. I like that. This alcoholic dressing you've got here. I'm, that's very unusual. It's practically raw gin with some, some oil sitting through it. But I like your cookery. I like what you've done. I like the crumb that goes around the fish. It's got a nice crunchy texture to it. Puree is lovely and the crab meat is a lovely little surprise. I love this fish with basil and bits of apple and fried courgette flour. I think it's beautiful. I think this is a really crackingly clever dish. Full of inventiveness, full of creativity, and it's delicious. Well done, Maria. <laughs> Jamie, I love the way your fish dish looks. Basil and courgette puree is one of my favourites. Oh, it sings on the plate with this fish. It's a wonderful, light plate of food. Thoroughly enjoyed your main course, Jamie. Yeah, I'd love to get straight through today. Everything that I could do has been done, so I just need somebody else to seriously mess up. Oh. <laughs> Leo, inspired by his Greek Cypriot heritage, has cooked roasted rump of lamb served with green bean, lovage, and feta salad, a cumin and garlic chickpea puree, and finished with a lamb sauce. I think the lamb is wonderfully cooked, love it, and the sauce is also fabulous. The feta goes very well, and that Greek yogurt underneath it is very light. I'd like a bit more of that. But when you tell me it's about your heritage of Greece, which is a, a place I love, you have amazing products coming from, from Greece. I just don't find I'm having the heart of Greece here in this plate of food, and why have you held back? I think there's so much more that you could have brought to this plate of food. The dish lacks punch for me and I find it very simple. I just wanted, at this stage, in the semi-final, a little bit more oomph, a bit more energy in the dish, and some more surprises, Leo. 
It's a beautifully flavoured dish. I particularly like what you've done to those chickpeas. I'd like you to play some more. I really would. I'd like you to let your imagination go a little bit wild. I like his cooking, but he's not quite getting oh, the grasp of this one. It's too safe. Yeah. It's too safe. No, I didn't impress him as much as I thought. I really don't want to cook again today. I don't think any of us want to cook again today. It's been a long day. Inspired by his granddad, Tom has cooked turbot on the bone, served with a leek puree, confit leeks, smoked leeks and hazelnuts, finished with a seaweed-infused fish sauce. I'm really pleased, Tom, that you've worked on the presentation of your food today. That is a lovely plate of food, beautifully presented. Turbot cooked on the bone, beautifully done. Great leek cookery. There's a lovely sharpness and acidity that comes through your sauce as well. Now, I would be really happy to have this served to me in, in a restaurant. I'd thoroughly enjoy it. That's a good bit of cookery, that, Tom. I think it's a tasty plate of food. Love the puree, the leek puree you have underneath the fish. Also enjoying the sauce and the creamy, a little bit of sharpness. And the hazelnuts, there's not too many, uh, but it brings a nice texture to it. I think the plate looks OK. <laughs> it tastes great. I love the flavours that you've brought to, to your dish. Turbot's a, a big, meaty fish, and yours is beautiful. It's soft, it's almost buttery, it's lovely. I love that sauce. I'm still not sold on the presentation. Tom, I'm really sorry. It looks a little tossed across the top, and I'm not convinced that's the best way to serve it. That's secondary, because the flavours, however, are great. I'm happy with the dish I put out. Uh, whether or not it gets me through, I don't know, because there's great dishes out there, so... Stephen's fish and chips, inspired by his nana, consists of John Dory rolled in batter scraps, mushy peas, pea puree, pastry cigars filled with a preserved lemon pom puree, pom souffle, and a herb oil tartare sauce topped with crispy shallots. The dish is finished with a pea juice and herb oil dressing. Before I dig into this, can I just say I think this is an absolutely lovely looking dish. It's so pretty. Thank you very much. That is a fantastic fish and chips. Thank you very that much. That is great. The fish in a batter crumb, I think, is inspired. You've got the crisp of chip, going on in your pom souffle, tang of tartar sauce, sweetness of pea, crisp of potato chips, <laughs> softness of chips. I love it. Can you tell? Yeah, thank you very much. It's not fish and chips, in the term of fish and chips, but I love it. It is beautiful. It really is very clever. You're taking a traditional dish and you've turned it into a fine dining plate of food. You've got a lovely pea puree on the side, You've got mushy peas the way they should be, badly coloured but taste great. Fish is beautifully cooked. A tartar sauce that is completely unusual but taste of tartar sauce. Very clever, very, very nice. I love it. Thank you very much. The scraps and batters that you, you've covered the fish in, I love the crunch of it. I think it's very cool and a really great way to, to sort of honour your, your granny. I want to be in the top two more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> Smashed it. But two out of eight is quite slim. Like, you need to produce something amazing. I feel like I did that. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. He's so happy. So it's going to be hard work picking two out of this lot. Louisa has made lamb cannon, served with dauphinoise potato, caramelised onion puree, fresh peas, crispy onion rings and sauce vierge. Finish with garlic flowers and a lamb sauce. Louisa, is this possibly the most restrained 
dish I've seen from him. Like the presentation, very pretty. I do find the, the portion of the different ones is, is very big compared to, to the protein that, that's on here. The lamb is perfectly cooked, nicely seasoned. That sauce, another fab sauce from you. I think the dauphinoise is cooked well. I'd like it to be a bit more creamy. I think it needs just a touch more seasoning. There's a lot of potato and not a great deal of lamb, which slightly disappoints me, and I'll tell you why, because that is absolutely delicious. The sauce is rich and deep. Your dauphinoise has got the hint of garlic. I would like a little bit more lamb, please. That dauphin was is not good. In fact, it's quite average. The rest of the plate is excellent. The lamb is cooked beautifully. The peas are delicious. The puree on the plate has a big flavour. Classical food comes with big power flavour. That was my memory of cooking classical food, and you've done that. I did it as well as I could. The dauphin was just let me down. I'm just really gutted about that. But, you know, chin up. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah. Better start planning the next dish. Inspired by his father and his love of the Lake District, Matt has cooked sea bream stuffed with a morel and wild boar pancetta duck cell, a wild boar dashi gel, cavolo nero stems, sauteed morels, potato pebbles, edible moss, finished with a chicken jus and a moss reduction. The plate is served with a moss dashi poured over dry ice. I like it, I love it. I, I think the idea is the mist coming off the waterfall with that, the perfume of the moss that sits on the rocks. I assume that's what you're trying to achieve here. Impressive. I can sum this up in one word, and that's outstanding. That is a stunning, stunning piece of work in every way. The wild boar inside the fish works a delight. It really does enhance that lovely flavour of the fish. And, and the kombu you've been poured over it and, and giving you that smell is clever, interesting, and I think you've hit the nail on the head. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Thank you. The sea bream is well cooked. The sauce is nice. I, I quite like the, the texture of this moss. It's almost like it's been sort of deep fried. <laughs> yeah? yeah, so quite crispy. Everything's been cooked nicely. Delicious plate of food. It's very clever. Thank you. Once you start bringing up mist from a waterfall around your dish, you've got to make sure you deliver. And for me personally, I think you absolutely deliver on this. The fish is cooked brilliantly. It's flaking as well. That gel starts off sweet and ends up smoky. I think they're brilliant flavours. I think it looks fantastic. Flavours that I have never experienced before. You've got great imagination. I, I'm really, really taken by that. No, you can't get better than that. That was amazing. Hope he's proud. I just wish he was here to see it. It's really good just to sort of honour his legacy. Gareth's dish, inspired by his mother, is gooseberry floating islands topped with gooseberry chutney, granola, fresh gooseberries, a yogurt twill, on an elderflower creme anglaise, and served with a gooseberry ice lolly. I really like the gooseberry sort of ice lolly that you have there. I like the idea of the granola on top for the texture. I just find this is a really poor anglaise you have here, custard. It's, it's almost, look, it's, it's wishy-washy. It's, it's like water. And that's why your floating islands aren't floating. I'm a massive fan of gooseberries. I like the sweet sharpness of them. I think that's very nice indeed. I think you've created here a very different sort of dessert. It's not the most delicate of floating island desserts I've ever seen. Could be smarter. Your flavour combinations, though, I think are lovely. I kind of agree with Mum. I think it's about time we resurrected the Goodsbury. The idea is good, but the execution is poor. I've got a thin custard, first of all, and secondly, it's never going to float with all that granola and chutney sitting on top of it. I think this could have been better. Gareth, I think the store is great, but I think your dish could have been a lot better. 
feel quite gutted, actually, quite deflated, because I know how good that dish could be. Next time around, I have to show them, you know, I can execute dishes perfectly. Inspired by childhood memories of baking with his mother, Craig has made a deconstructed flapjack, salted oat biscuit, roasted oat ice cream in a butter twill, date sponge, date puree, and a golden syrup gel. You've got all the flavors, the oats, the maple syrup coming through, even the dates. It's just a bit of indulgence, and to have the underlying flavors of the flapjack is fab. I like brown desserts. They're my favorite. That is a beautiful beige and brown dessert, and it's made me very, very happy indeed. You've elevated this dish to a height that is way beyond the flapjack. The ice cream is great in the centre, the oat ice cream, because it just brings the freshness and the lightness to the dish, because it's very rich, but we like that. I really, really like this dish. It's a very difficult thing to get right, and you've absolutely nailed it. Thank you. I'd be absolutely devastated if I had to cook again. For only two chefs to go through next, it's, that's, it's brutal. I told you you'd do it. Well, there's only two of us, isn't there? But yeah, um, I don't know if I'm going to get through. Hopefully that was enough. I realise that we've chosen a fantastic eight chefs for our semi-final. And the people that you dedicated those dishes to, I think would be extremely proud. Thank you, chefs. Thank you. I don't know four I'd like to put through. Well, we've got brilliant semi-finalists, but two, just two, best dishes from these eight? That's tough. This is not going to be easy. I have definitely four chefs that, that I really like and I think have done great today. I love Stephen's fish and chips. Yep. I thought it was brilliant. Brilliant concept, familiar fish and chips in the poshest style you've ever seen. I thought it was brilliant. I really enjoyed mm. this dish. And I just love Stephen, the way he cooks and he just smiles and he's a great chef. I think he did great today. Great piece of fish cookery with a classic dish of fish and chips. Beautifully executed, great ideas, diverse, different, and very much close to his heart. Who else did you like? I liked Matt's dish. Matt with the waterfall in the ocean. To be able to capture that in his plate of food, I thought was mm. genius. It was a great plate of food. It was just one of the most stunning dishes I've ever seen. The whole thing was a presentation of brilliance. That's the Matt I've been waiting for. Absolutely outstanding. I love Craig's dessert. Flapjack reinvented. What a fabulous chef. Every single one of those aspects was delicious on its own, delicious combined, and just brilliant. Very artistic, very clever. A lot of thought went into creating this dessert. Mm. Uh, Craig really impressed me today. Jamie's a class act. Mm. I thought the flavour combinations, the look of the dish, it was new, it was different, it was vibrant, and I found it very, very exciting. I agree. Jamie's dish was great fun. Lovely textures, great ideas. And Jamie always comes to the kitchen with a surprise when he puts a dish on the table. He hasn't failed yet, mm. and he's still delivering it. Cooking of the fish was perfect, and, and the fish itself with that flour for the coating was wonderful. We all agree on who our favourite four chefs are. Who is going to be our favourite two? Doesn't get any easier, this, does it? No. It has been hard making a decision. It's been a tough day and it's been an even tougher judging. One of our favourite dishes. Was Matt's. Very well done. The other of our favourite dishes
could buy Stephen. Fish and chips in the semi-final. <laughs> We found judging just two dishes out of so many good chefs really hard. In fact, too hard. We've got a third favourite. Well done, Craig. <laughs> Matt. Stephen, Craig, gone, op it. We'll see you in the next round. Thank you very much. Well done. Well Cheers. done. Well Cheers. done. Thank you. Good job, guys. <laughs> oh. Wow, I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that at all. I was sh shocked. I was absolutely shocked. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> so happy. And to have that dish get me through is just an added bonus, like, it's crazy. It was probably the most emotional dish I've ever cooked. It's so many emotions. Mental. It's mental. None of you need to be despondent having to cook again. You've now got another chance to prove yourself and get yourself through to the next round. We've already tasted eight plates of food. What we want from you now is something light and vibrant. In fact, we've taken away all the meat and all the fish. Two of you, at the end of this, will be going home. You have one hour and 15 minutes to create, cook and serve your dish. Come up and get your ingredients. As well as the wide range of fruit and vegetables, the chefs also have herbs, spices, and dairy products. I think this is a cracking challenge. Personally, I love fruit and veg. I mean, being a greengrocer for many, many years, I would do. You have to work harder. You have to be far more creative to make brilliant dishes with no meat and fish. It's working with fruit and veg is obviously exciting. It gets you going and gets you thinking. So. Put you on the spot. Obviously disappointed to be here, but I just got to pick myself up and uh, cook good food. I'm absolutely exhausted, but I'm just going to give it my all and I'm going to pop a go for it. We've asked our chefs to cook something light and fresh and of the moment. That doesn't mean boring. A lot of our customers in restaurants, they're looking for something light and fresh. It shouldn't be difficult. But when you've got so much to choose from, it does play with your mind. Louisa, I almost don't want to ask you how, how you're feeling. You're you disappointed or...? Yeah, I'm really upset, actually. It's really, really stressful, but I'm going to fight for it. I'm not going down without a fight. So what are you going to make? I'm thinking I'm going to use some asparagus, pan roast uh, the green asparagus in butter, and the white asparagus I'm going to do crispy in the panko. I'm going to make an egg puree. I've got a poached uh, duck egg, roasted key mushrooms, and some pickled shallots. This obviously means a lot to you. Can, can I ask you why it means so much? I want to further my career. I want to do well. I want to be the best I can. It hurts you when you're not, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. Asparagus with egg and mushrooms is a classic mix. Knowing Louisa, there's going to be some little surprises in there. The pickled shallots and the olives are going to be the integral part of this dish. That's what's going to give it a little bit of edge, a different flavour. This is a lovely Mediterranean-sounding dish. Vegetarian food should be a special item for me, really. My girlfriend's vegetarian. On my days off, whenever I cook at home, I never cook meat. I don't cook two meals. I just eat vegetarian food. Jamie's decided to go down the Mediterranean road and base his dish around carrots. He's got a carrot puree, then he's going to make a slaw. But the bit that caught our eye was this carrot steak. And he's going to cook it gently, and then he's going to colour it, a beautiful caramelisation in the pan. A carrot steak. 
Yeah. That's it? Right, the body of the dish, so we're going to have some uh, nicely whipped up seasoned mascarpone. And for texture, I'm going to puff up some of the giant wild rice. Right, so there's always more with you. There's always more. Jamie surprised us before in the competition. I'd like to see him give us another one of those great dishes we know he can do. 40 minutes left. So what have you come up with? So I'm going to do a, um, a crispy duck egg, and then I'm going to serve it with the classic combination of asparagus, wild mushrooms, truffle and a pea veluta. So, Leo, what are the surprises in your dish? It's not necessarily surprises. It's all about um, using the, these simple ingredients and bringing out as much flavour as you can out of them. Are you going through, Leo? One, yeah, definitely. Good luck. Thank you. Leo is going classic with his dish. I want to see him give us some surprises now. This is when it counts. The pea veloute needs to be vibrant and full of colour. He's got to be very careful with this that he doesn't overcook that egg yolk. What are you cooking for us, Tom? Confit duck egg, which I'm doing in the water bath, asparagus, mushrooms, a walnut dressing and truffle. That sounds just like Leo's dish. Uh, yeah, it does, so it's just going to have to be better then. Does this type of challenge, taking away the, the meat and the fish, worry you? Does it concern you? Because it's off the moment, you've got to think on your feet and you've got to come up with something pretty quick. No, not really. I feel I'm quite good at thinking on my feet and quite relishing the challenge, actually, to be honest. So you're a fast mover? Uh, in the mind, not necessarily in the physical department. Nothing wrong with that. I like that, I like that. Some of us have faster minds than others. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's cooking the duck egg in the water bath. Timing has to be right, and the temperature of that water bath has to be spot on. As soon as you crack open that egg and it's not cooked right, it's going to be a disaster. The dish I did this morning wasn't good enough, so if anything, I feel lucky that I've got that second chance to prove, you know, I know what I'm doing and I can cook. I know it needs to be light, so I'm going to do kind of like a risotto, but it's going to be potato instead of risotto rice. And then I'm going to put through, like, there's going to be feta, peas and sweet corn as well. That's going to be in an onion. The rest is kind of work in progress as well. A risotto? Yeah. So you're not using rice, you're going to use potato? Yeah, so, yeah. Sorry. How? How are you going to do that? I'm not going to wash it, I'm going to keep the starch in the potato. Right. And then use that to work it to uh, help thicken it up a bit. I like the sound of your dish, guys. You've got a lot of work to do. Yes. Gareth is using potatoes to make something very similar to a risotto. He's also using a stock from sweet corn to give it a lovely corn flavour running through it. He's taking the simplest of ingredients and he's making something that sounds delicious, inventive and creative at the same time. I think it's going to be quite a simple presentation. Have a little play around, see how it comes out. You guys have got five minutes. Five minutes to finish your dish. Five minutes to stay in the competition. Two minutes. Just two minutes. That's it. Time's up. Well done, everybody. Well done. Looking good. Yeah. It's fresh, simple, fresh. Are you happy? Yeah. Louisa has made poached duck egg, served with crispy white asparagus in panko crumb, grilled green asparagus, fried mushroom, egg yolk emulsion, pickled shallots, finished with a truffle and mushroom powder. Looks good. Thank you. Looks good, looks pretty. Let's try it. Really enjoying the white asparagus that's been panned in and made crispy. I absolutely love it. The eggs brings a richness to it. And then you've got these little surprises. The pickled shallots is the sharpness that needs to cut through the richness of the egg and refreshes the palate. You've given us a great plate of food. Thank you. I don't know who told you to put bread, crispy breadcrumbs around asparagus, but that, I think, is inspired. 
Having the little rings of pink pickled shallot gives another flavour, one of sharpness. We've all dipped asparagus into egg yolk. It's a tried and tested combination. However, you've done more. And in my opinion, you have raised this dish. I can't fault your cookery. I can't fault your idea. And the combinations work beautifully. Well done, you. Good job, Louisa. Nice to see a smile back on your face. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, relief. <sighs> relief. Yeah. Gareth has cooked potato risotto with peas, sweet corn and feta in a burnt onion cup. Roasted baby aubergine, roast peppers, pickled asparagus, roasted tomatoes and a chive oil. I think your risotto potatoes is an inspired idea. I do like that with the sweet corn as well. The aubergine with, uh, with soy on it, that's salty. Feta, tomato and pepper, it seems like that's the making of a salad. I like the idea of, of making a risotto with the potatoes and you've used the feta in there and the sweet corn as well. The other bits of the garnish, especially the sharpness of the tomatoes, for me, it, it doesn't work together. There are lovely elements about it. I love the freshness of the sweet corn, I love the peppers, the freshness of the tomato, the lovely slices of asparagus and the onion. You know, you've done some really nice work here, but I feel like I've just gone to a buffet with a plate and I've taken some things off it and I've just put them on my plate because I want to eat them. I wouldn't say when I finished the dish I was 100% happy with it. I tried as hard as I could. It just wasn't, it was just one of those days where things didn't come together for me. One of those days in the office, so. Leo's dish is crispy duck egg topped with truffle, served with asparagus, broad beans, courgette, pickled asparagus, and finished with a pea velouté. Leo, I can see where you're going with your idea, but I just feel that the plate is just a little bit all squashed in. I'm just expecting that velouté to have a much more vibrant colour. The egg is nicely cooked and you've got a lovely runny centre to it. But you just don't get a sense of the dish because it is just cramped into this little tiny bowl. So nothing really stands out. Leo, I love the crispiness of the egg. It's cooked perfectly. When you cut it, you can see how beautiful it is. It tastes nice. The way it looks is it's just because of the wrong plate here. I love your pea velouté. I think it's sweet. I love the flavour of that. Love the crispy egg and the egg yolk. I'm disappointed I don't pick up truffle and the pickled asparagus. I'm feeling all right, uh, a little bit on the fence again. Just can't do right at the moment, I just can't please all three of them. Tom has made confit duck yolk, grilled white and green asparagus, raw white asparagus, giroles, sliced raw mushrooms, pickled shallots, broad beans, walnuts, finished with parsley oil and truffle. I love the rich egg yolk going all over the dish. That I like. I like the pickled shallot. That gives a little sharp sweetness as well. That's really it for me. The mushrooms raw don't give a great deal, just texture. I find the broad beans a little too dry, I'm afraid. There isn't a great deal to it. I quite like it, Tom. I do. I think it's got freshness to it. It's light. I like the walnuts on the plate. The asparagus is cooked well. The egg is cooked well. I like the broad beans and I like the peas. I like everything on the plate, to be honest with you. If anything, my criticism would be just a touch of seasoning. But overall, I find the dish, uh, I find it very enjoyable. It looks light, it looks refreshing, which is what we've asked you to deliver. If anything, be careful. I ate a lot of the Gerolds on here, one or two of them a bit sandy. OK, that's me finding fault, because those things can cost you, Tom. But I like the way your plate is looking, and I've enjoyed it. Well, I wasn't sure, Tom, but the chef's either side of me seemed more than satisfied.
Hopefully done enough. Yeah. Finally, it's Jamie who's made carrot steak. Served with carrot slaw with orange segments, carrot puree, fresh ricotta, ricotta fritters, and crispy wild rice. Jamie, a very interesting idea when you talk about a carrot as a steak, because it does work. I have to say, quite a surprise, but it did work. I love the flavour of the carrot steak. Puree is delicious. The ricotta cheese works a treat, piped on it. You've got the crunchy ricotta as well. And what's really good about this is the refreshing slaw, because there's a little bit of orange running through there that just lifts and zings the palate. Great combinations, great ideas, great textures, a lovely dish. Well done, Jamie. I've believed for a while now that you are a very, very clever cook who thinks slightly differently to most. And I think this emphasises it here. Cleverness, creativity, and bags of flavour. Very good. Very, very good. To me, I've enjoyed everything on here from your take on a carrot steak. The ricotta, which has been deep fried, it, it just comes together really nicely. Really good to see you come back focused on the challenge and really deliver what we've asked you to do. I'm so, so happy. I don't know where these things keep coming from. I was just staring at a table, I just saw carrots. I was like, does anybody else need carrots? Because I'm going to take all of these carrots. <laughs> Everyone was like, uh, no, it's fine, you can have them. Well done, man. Cheers, guys. Smash it up. Thank you so much for the enormous effort you've put into this today. And we've tasted some fantastic food. Two of you unfortunately, are leaving us. Thank you for your hard work. Let us now do some judging. Off you go. Wow, what a day. Yeah. Well, three are gonna go through to the next round. Two of them we gotta send home. I don't know who that two's going to be. When you come so far, nobody wants to go. You could feel the disappointment oozing off our final five chefs that had to cook again, and I absolutely feel for them. Louisa was close to tears at the start of this cook. I mean, that's how much it means to her. She was so disappointed. I really enjoyed the dish she gave us. She nailed the brief. It was an invention test with lightness and freshness and creativity and good cookery, and she did all of that. I loved the texture of the white asparagus that are being crumbed. She always has little surprises coming through her cooking, and that was back in the kitchen this afternoon. All three of us absolutely demolished Jamie's dish of carrot steak, <laughs> carrot slaw, and the ricotta fritter. We loved it. We absolutely loved it, all of us. I it. really think that Jamie's carrot dish was the dish of the invention test for me. Fabulous dish, especially using such a humble ingredient such as, as a carrot to create something wonderful. I really like Leo's breadcrumbed egg, and I really like the pea velouté. There were some good things on the plate. The egg was beautifully coated, the chive oil was delicious, and the egg was lovely and runny in the centre. But I was slightly underwhelmed by the dish. We keep telling Leo he needs to push himself. We know he's a good cook, but there's got to be something extra, and I still haven't found it. I was slightly disappointed by Tom. There were bits of Toms I enjoyed and bits of Toms that, frankly, I felt a little disappointed by. I quite enjoyed it. I thought the plate looked nice. I thought it was a tasty plate of food, mm. yeah. I thought, I thought Tom did a really good job. I quite liked his dish. I liked the lightness of it, the freshness of it. I thought that Tom had delivered more than actually the, the, the visual aspects of his dish. I don't think Gareth knew really what he was going to cook completely. I just don't think he did the risotto justice. And that, for me, was the main element of this dish. This is, that was the bit I was so looking forward to. I did enjoy the feta and potato and sweet corn. That was my favourite part on the plate. I didn't enjoy it, eating that with the tomatoes uh, and the peppers. <clears throat> quite disappointed, because I actually was quite excited to try this dish. Yeah, I'd be gutted if I left the competition now. A little dip in form and, you know, that uh, puts you in serious trouble. 
I'm not too sure whether I've done enough yet. Fingers crossed I have, but I'm not 100% sure. To go out any time would be gutting. But, you know, I'm hopeful. I had a plate of food I wanted to cook, so I'm, I'm happy. I need to remind myself that actually the decision we're making here will result in our final six. It's a big call. As we said, three of you will be going forward and joining Matt, Stephen and Craig. Two of you, unfortunately, are leaving us. The first chef going through is... Jamie. Louisa, you're also staying with us. <sighs> and the final chef we're taking through is... Tom. Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Well done. Okay. Well done. You should be proud of yourselves. Gentlemen, we'll say goodbye to you. Thank you very much. It's been a brilliant experience. It's been one of the best experiences anyone could ask for. I'm gutted, but I'm happy at the same time because of what I've achieved here. After all this, I'll come out stronger. When you think it's tough in the kitchen, you'd think back to uh, moments in this kitchen and you realise, you know, life's not so tough. You are in the final six. It's a tough day. Every day is going to be a tough day from now on in, but I'm absolutely delighted, happy and elated to be in the next round. I'm lost for words right now, feeling emotional. I mean, I want to cry because I'm sad and next minute I want to cry because I'm happy. Ah, oh, it feels mega. Yeah, it feels so good. Such a big day today. Incredibly happy, like, over the moon to be in the top six. Um, yeah, and then slightly nervous what's on the corner. Tomorrow night, the semi-finals continue as the first three chefs take on one of the country's most inspiring kitchens. Absolutely amazing. You know, it looks exactly the way that we do it. Only the best will go through to finals week. There is nothing I don't like. You've cooked food here that I would consider to be at a two-star level. 